Hey, what's going on guys? It's Steve. So, I have this new YouTube channel and I've been trying to figure out a lot of stuff with it. The lights, the sound, the video editing software, the rendering for YouTube, any, you know, kind of effects I want to put in it. One thing I've been working on, I think I found a solution for it I wanted to share with you guys is, have you ever um, brought your video into whatever video editing software you use and it looks like this? Well, first of all, MP4 is not a great format for editing, and, and DaVinci Resolve is not a... Or you recorded your screen, and you bring your, uh, you know, records the MP4, and you bring it in, you try to scrub through it, and you kind of get results like this. Well, for both of those issues, I think I found a solution. So I use DaVinci Resolve for my video editing software. It's fantastic. Uh, they have a free version of it that's you know full full feature set to it and i do all my uh, editing and and uh, building my videos for youtube on that the problem is i also record on my iphone i'm just starting out can't afford a good camera yet iphone records pretty well so i use that for my recording problem is when i bring those iphone videos into davinci resolve the audio sync is completely off because the iphone records in a uh a variable frame rate so it's not a constant 30 frames per second and when I bring it into DaVinci Resolve it chokes it doesn't know how to deal with that so it's sends it at like 24 frames per second so the audio and the video are, are off and even when I go in and try to force it to 30 it's still I can't get the the audio and video to sync up when I bring the mp4s in you know it, it, when you try to scrub it gets real jittery and stuff so yeah you can then go in and create a proxy clip in DaVinci Resolve and you know that proxy clip just kind of uh, builds like a half or quarter scale uh, video that you can use for editing so that it's faster while you're editing but then when you go and render out it renders the you know the full resolution uh, video and then with the iPhone video that doesn't work even rendering the proxy clip the audio and video is still out of sync with the proxy clip so the way I found uh, to fix this is to con uh, convert it to uh, DNX HD Kodak from Avid um, and I found a free application that'll let you do that there's a lot of paid ones out there that I've tried and so I f actually found a free application and I'm gonna walk you guys through that now and show you how easy that is it's relatively quick and uh, gets great results and then you know you dump it into DaVinci Resolve or HitFilm or Premiere or Sony Vegas or whatever you're using and that Kodak is going to work really well in any of those, uh, those editing programs. So I'm going to show you how to download the Kodak, load it on your machine, uh, free application to do that conversion, and what the difference it makes in DaVinci Resolve. All right, guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and I ha just have two clips. This one is from uh, my iPhone, and then this other one that's showing offline is uh, one of the screen recordings. It it's just a plain MP4 uh, file that's right this guy right here so we'll start off with the the iPhone video so I'll drag that into my preview window and as you'll be able to see right away um, the recording is off from the beginning here so let me play it a little bit or you recorded your screen and you bring your uh, you know records the mp4 and you bring it in you try to scrub through it and you kind of get results so like you can this. see that uh, that sync is off already so that's horrible I mean that's that's unusable obviously and then the same with this guy, if we drag it down to the timeline, and this offline thing, this is another weird thing for DaVinci Resolve, where it, the, the media is there, I dragged it in, it's got a good link to it, but it's showing it as offline, and I don't know if it has to do with the, the decoding of the, um, the MP4 or what, but even if the video were there, watch what happens when we scrub through this. I mean, it's basically like stop motion. We're not going to be able to do any editing with that. That's horrible. So, I mean, for this one, we could generate a proxy clip, and, and that would take care of that. But why don't we take care of both of these in one shot here? So the first thing we want to do is go out and search for the Avid DNX HD codec. And the one we want to get is this Avid QuickTime Codex LE. So download that, get the one for Win or Mac if you're on the Mac, obviously. That's real small, it's like 10 megabytes, 9.4 megabytes. So just open that guy up, execute it. 
All right, we're gonna go through real quick. I already have it on here. Normally it would just say, you know, install. So I'm just gonna go through and show you what it looks like. That's it. It's, I mean, really the full install is pretty much that quick too. So we got that installed. The next thing we need to do is go out and get iframe converter. So this is a free converter that will let you convert the uh, DNX HD. All right, and then we're gonna hit next, accept the agreement. Sure, just selecting all the defaults. There we go. So now it just brings this up and it's a real simple uh, interface on this thing. So we just wanna go out and get our source video here. So I'm gonna go out to my project folder Go to the original video and I'm gonna grab this one and the original MOV dump that in there and then I'm gonna hit the convert button and it asks you um, what you want to convert to so I've been using this DNX HD 36 if you do the 185 or the 120 it's gonna give you a little bit higher quality but the file size is gonna be much larger and really for the stuff I do I'm not really seeing uh, any quality drop with using this one. So I'm going to hit this, uh, the DNX HD 36, and I'm going to choose the path to my project folder again, and I'm going to let it rip. All right, guys, so it's all done, and you can see up here it took just about seven minutes to convert both of the files. So I'm going to click yes to go to the converted folder. And you can see both of the original files are now converted to MOVs and it automatically keeps the same name. And if we look at it, let's go to uh, display or details list here. So the, um, the original iPhone video is about 1.7 gigs now. Originally it was uh, 740 megs. So converting it does add quite a bit of size to it but let me show you the difference that it makes so let's go back into resolve all right so here we are back in resolve in my project so i'm going to go out to that um, folder that where it dumped the the new videos so it has these uh these two new movs that were created by the converter i'm going to dump those in so this is that original iphone video and if you remember when i showed you before the sync was completely off so let's do the same exact thing, drag it into the preview window, just pick a random spot on the video, and we'll play it. Completely off, because the iPhone records in a, uh, a variable frame rate, so it's not a constant 30 frames per second. And when so I as you guys can see, the audio is perfectly in sync now. Let me go to another spot. And it uh, gets great results, and then... Even at the end of the video, it's still good. That's because as part of the process of encoding it to the DNX HD codec, it set it as a constant frame rate. So a constant uh, 30 frames per second rather than that variable frame rate that it comes at off the iPhone. So that fixes that first issue. So let's take this file that we were having trouble scrubbing again um, against so when we had the mp4 remember it showed offline and it just showed the audio and when i tried even scrubbing just the audio it was kind of it felt like stop motion so we take that video now that's been encoded with the dnx hd and watch what happens when we scrub now so now we have full-on real-time scrubbing and this is at full resolution i haven't created any of the the proxy clips or anything because this codec is much more efficient for video editing and again this will have an effect in basically whatever video editor you use they all work much better with this codec than they do with an mp4 or even just a straight mov off a, an iphone or some other device with a, a simple free app and a free codec and then using free editing software that removes a huge hurdle that I've had and from what I've seen online a lot of other people have had with editing. So there you go guys hopefully that was uh, helpful for you and um, it's gonna help you guys kind of tackle some of those issues that I've been dealing with and if I find any of these other hints I'll upload a video on them. Uh, you know it's a great community hopefully we can help each other out. Please rate and subscribe uh, to my videos and comment down below 
uh, tell your friends I'm really trying to, to grow my channel and I, I just I like doing these videos I got a lot of stuff planned um, and I'm gonna be up with a, a bunch of new stuff in the coming weeks here so hope to see you next time thanks guys